do see, I see Dan, Daniel, uh, Leanna, Melissa, Jason, Alex. I do not see Daly on yet, but I guess we can we can start. David, can um, you ask Alex to mute? I think I don't know if it's Alex or Sonia, but there's a big echo. Can we mute one of the computers? There we go. And I think I'm muted now too. Right? No, I'm open. Okay. Okay, so. We'll go ahead and call to a session the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of Little MISD uh, being held here on May 18th, 2020 at Zeller Center for Learning and Leadership. Due to the health and safety concerns related to COVID-19 coronavirus, this meeting will be conducted by video conference or telephone call. At least a quorum of the board will be participating by video conference or telephone call in accordance with the provisions of section 551.125 or 551.127 of the Texas government code that has not been suspended by order of the governor. This special meeting will be virtual via Zoom IT or Zoom, and it will be live streamed on YouTube and Little Elm ISD TV. Uh, at this time, um, the board will not need to recess into closed meeting as we don't have any issues to discuss um, under those subchapters allowed. So we will just go into calling order um, the open session. So we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. That Texas flag? Honor the Texas, Texas flag. flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the Texas, Texas. one state, one individual. Yes. All right, and then we will have our introduction and roll call. All right, <clears throat> Mr. English, are we missing you somehow? Okay, we'll monitor on for when he joins on. All right, so moving on to the superintendent spotlight. We have nothing under spotlight tonight, but we do have some uh, a report that I've asked Mr. Roberts to um, include under superintendent's report. We have some students um, and something that we are, we're very proud of with these students and want to give them a chance to say a few words tonight. So we moved it under reports of the superintendent. Okay, so before we get to that then, so do we have any citizen input, Ms. Flores? Do we see anything in in the weight room or? Any of that? Okay. In chat or? Oh, and by the way, Delion is with us via phone, I would assume, because he's on, he did respond in chat. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, there he is. Okay. So everyone is not present. Okay. Well, let's um, let's follow up with Cecilia on that. In the meantime, um, we once we do get that figured out, we can have them jump on after the um, after the superintendent or the reports of superintendent. Is that okay? Okay, Mr. Gallagher. All right, President Montemayor, board members. I'm going to ask that we move um, item C, reports of the superintendent, up first. If Mr. Roberts, are you okay with doing that? That way, we um, we can let these students uh, jump off of and this meeting that's perfectly fine and we have miss brown here tonight as well so awesome. we have yeah yeah i'm ready to do whatever y'all need me to do i'm right, shuffling I'm, shuffling papers perfect i'm going to ask that we move item c up uh to the to the top and then we'll we'll go from there so let's move item c up if, if you're okay with that and that's uh student recognition okay so you're good ross all right, I'm ready. President Montemayor, Board of Trustees, uh, Superintendent Gallagher. I think uh, whenever we have an opportunity um, in an open forum to really celebrate the incredible students uh, that we have here in Little Elm ISD, it always is a great evening. And once again, uh, it has fallen to me to stand and deliver 
uh, a great uh, presentation and celebration for an incredible uh, group of young men and women. And so I'd like to take just a few minutes and talk uh, about our incredible student council at Little Elm High School. And I know we have a lot of visitors tonight, which is really cool. We have a plethora of our awesome students. And we have Mr. Shiree with us here as well. He is our sponsor uh, for our student council. And um, what we are here to honor our uh, student council for is really a direct relationship uh, to their hard work and determination that they've put in this year. And so I'm gonna summarize just real quick, but this comes from, um, this comes from the Texas Association of Student Council um, really governing board. And our students have been awarded um, uh, two outstanding uh, feats uh, within that organization. One being the outstanding student council, and this is based on documentation of student council organization specific project area, participation in TASC programs. Um, and so it just is really a benchmark of what these young men and women have done this year. So that is one award that they um, have been given as the Outstanding Student Council Award. And then, and all of these awards are at the state level. And so the next award is sweepstakes. And sweepstakes councils must first earn recognition as an outstanding student council based on documentation uh, of student council organization, specific project areas and participation before they even fall into this category. And they've been awarded the sweepstakes award as well. So hats off to them. I would like to, uh, this is pretty cool. This is an actual form letter that uh, we have received from Terry Ham, And that is the director of Texas Association of Student Councils along with Archie McAfee, who is the executive director of Texas Association of Secondary School Principals. And it says, congratulations. Your student council has earned recognition as the Texas Association of Student Councils, outstanding student council based on your documentation of student council organization, specific project areas, participation in TSC uh, programs and evaluation by your administrator. Your achievement serves as a benchmark for what a well-rounded student council in Texas should do to be effective. This is truly a significant accomplishment. As of April 19, 2020, only 337 student councils in Texas earned this recognition in 2019, 2020. You are an elite group. I urge you to share this good news with your administration, your school board, and your community. So with that being said, we want to say congratulations uh, to these students and to Mr. Shiree. I think a lot of them are here. And um, I think uh, Mr. Shiree is gonna turn it over to Avery Roman and she has a few words to say and she's the executive president of this group. Avery. Hi, um, my name is Avery and I just wanna start with, um, I'm a Lobo for Life and I'm a senior at Little Elm High School. Um, I've been a part of student council since my freshman year and it's truly been one of the most amazing experiences in my time at high school. Um, it's been so rewarding knowing that my executive board and I have achieved so much for the program. Um, it makes me really proud. Um, our goals coming into the year were to get the student body more involved and to do more for the school and community. Um, so first for our first goal, we host homecoming. That's one of our biggest projects all year and it's crazy. It's a lot of work. Um, we went from last year having around 250 student attendees, and this year we had nearly 700. Um, and our voter participation for our yearly elections went up by 100 students. Um, our group is really about student voice and advocacy, so to know that in just a short year we've managed to strengthen LHS's sense of community is something really great. Um, on to what led to um, our win of sweepstakes, we as a council had um, 126 student-led projects, 6,180 collective community service hours, over $42,000 in donated goods and um, $2,000 in donated funds. Um, being recognized at the state level by TASC makes me feel so, so happy and so proud. Um, our council couldn't have done it um, without the support of our administration, our advisors, our amazing executive board, our absolutely phenomenal committee chairs, um, and of course our members. Our members in the student body are why we do what we do. 
Many of us, um, many of us members have rigorous academic lives, jobs, extracurriculars, and sports, but they've all managed to make time to give back and improve our school and community. Um, it's been amazing to see the council grow from a small group of students to a huge philanthropic and welcoming community in just a few short years. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Ross, you're muted. Thank, thank you, Avery. That's, that is a great presentation. And we really appreciate that. Mr. Shari, uh, would you like to say just a couple of words real quick? And, and uh, I know you, you don't have a full team here, um, but if, if you want to kind of introduce the, the students just real fast so, for their recognition. I would like to, thank you. Um, as a short little paragraph, this year has been a special year for me because this is my first year of being even part of student council as a human at all. I was never in it in high school. I was never in it um, and even as a co-advisor to be led up to advisor. I was just kind of talked to by Miss Pentecost and said, hey, would you like it? And I, I jumped on the bandwagon. The awards that will be mentioned uh, or have been mentioned by Avery are truly due to the kids I've been blessed with. I did not pick these kids. They were picked by their own students and they were elected on their own accord. And so these students are none of my choosing, but ones that have fallen into my lap and ones that I have not of replaced with anybody else in the school. I'm sad to say that this will be the last year of me working with several of these kids because a lot of them are seniors. Five of my six executives are seniors. I'm gonna miss them a lot, even if they don't know it or not. But I do have one coming back as my president for next year. So I'm excited to be working with several of these uh, students that will name off in the year's future as well. The following are the students who deserve recognition. My executive president is Avery Roman, executive vice president and next year's president, Max Geyser, my executive treasurer, Matthew Rodacker, executive historian, Constance Williams, executive secretary, Asia Taylor, executive parliamentarian, Ricky Morales, and my committee chairs are Committee Chair of Pride and Patriotism, Pamela Perez. Committee Chair of Energy and Environment, Michaela Matier and Alex Hernandez. Committee Chair of Drugs and Student Health, Summer Walden. Committee Chair of Community Service, Elisic Valdez Garcia. Committee Chair of Black History Month, Tamia Thompson. Committee Chair of Valentine's Day, Elena Scroggins. And last and not least, the committee chair of homecoming, Carter Seals and Sam Doyle. Thank you all. And Mr. Shiree, thank you very much, Mr. Galver. Yeah, I was gonna just say, Mr. Shiree, you know, truly I appreciate your humbleness and, and you're right, we're always blessed with the students that we have, but you've done a great job of, of leading these students, being there as a support, guiding them. But you're correct that um, these students really earn this uh, recognition on their own. Um, I've had the pleasure with my superintendent's advisory committee uh, working with several of these students and I'm just very proud of our students in Little Almighty. But this is a wonderful group. Um, so if you're a senior, if you can, I've got all of the pictures on my screen. Raise your hand real quick just so I can. All right. So seniors, I'm going to tell you this. I, I wish we were um, live right now to where we could have you shake the hands of our board members. Um, unfortunately, uh, we can't. This is, this is, by the way, our last virtual meeting. We're going to go back uh, to regular meetings in June. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing you this Thursday at Texas Motor Speedway. And I know you guys are really looking forward to it as well. It's the first time you're going to be able to see your friends and um, you know get back together as one unit and one group. Um, so with that, we're very proud of you. You guys uh, definitely earned this recognition and um, you are what makes Little MISD such a wonderful district. It's, it always goes back to our kids and our, our teachers and uh, Mr. Shiree, thank you so much for supporting these awesome kids. Thank you. Way to go guys. So we're gonna let y'all um, leave the meeting. You guys are welcome to stay. It's an open meeting, but I'm sure you have other other things you want to do as well. So thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all and I look forward to seeing our seniors this Thursday. Thank you, everybody. So uh, President Matamayor, I would also, as, as, as I'm looking at the agenda, I would also like to um, 
move our introduction to our executive director for, for human resources up next, if you're okay with that, because I see we have Ashley Brown. I, yes, there she is. Um, so I would like to allow uh, our deputy superintendent, Mr. Ross Roberts, to introduce her and have her say uh, Mr. Gallagher, if we could, we do have that, we did have a citizen input that wanted oh, to yeah. speak up. So we have gotten in touch with them and we're gonna have them come on now. Perfect. And then we'll have uh, Ashley Brown introduce her right after. Yes. Thank you. Okay, and I'm calling Dr. Um, Thompson right now. Thank you for calling. You've reached the private counseling practice of Monique Thompson, LPC. Let me try one more time. Thank you for calling. You've reached the private counseling practice of Monique Thompson, LPC. That's the number. We can, we can try right after the reports of the superintendent. As long as we get that in before any vote, I think we're good. So if you can hey, call Sonia. Our... Sorry, Daniel. Sonia, who's the 940 number? Yeah, there's a phone there's a phone call connected right now it's just on mute yeah sonia you're muted sonia you're muted okay i'm going by the form she filled out and that's the number i'm dialing okay so it's not the same number that's already the non four the non four o's rod yeah. oh okay never mind then sorry i see rod over here all right, so let so if you're okay, President Montemar, let's go ahead and uh, introduce uh, Ashley Brown. So, Mr. Roberts, if you want to move forward, yeah, absolutely, uh, Mr. Gallagher, uh, Board of Trustees. Again, thank you uh, for this opportunity, and uh, it's only appropriate that we have Miss Brown uh, front and center right now of all the screens. Her and her family is uh, right smack dab in the middle. And uh, before I say uh, a, a few words about uh, Ms. Brown, I'd like to mention our strategic plan goal about human capital. Uh, we will re recruit, recognize, and retain high quality and effective personnel that support student success at every level. And that leads uh, beautifully into really um, kind of the cornerstones of Ms. Brown and what she has communicated and what she stands for. And, uh, someone, a professional that is extremely focused on uh, the recruiting and recognition, retaining high quality, effective personnel. Uh, she also uh, is very impressive uh, in the area. And when you ask her directly, kind of her leadership style, uh, she will explain uh, that she definitely is a, a, an effective communicator as well as a collaborator. So, um, Ms. Brown comes to us. This is uh, 17 years a practitioner in uh, education, uh, where uh, I guess you could almost say was serving as the director of personnel for Carrollton Farmers Branch. Her first day with us will be May the 26th. Um, and I think I kind of had to arm wrestle her supervisor over at Carrollton Farmers Branch to get that date uh, out of them. So we're very fortunate that she'll be a part of us on the 26th. And uh, I am proud to announce that she is with her husband, Jeff, of 11 years, and he is an educator as well. Uh, so that is awesome. Thank you for your service, Jeff, and it's very nice to meet you. And uh, two incredible young men there. Uh, we have Devin, who's eight, and Carter, who's six. And Ashley, even, hi, guys. Nice to meet y'all. And uh, Ashley even informed us that um, one of, the, one of their highlights is to always have Nerf battles. So uh, that was a kind of an awesome little tidbit there to share with the Board of Trustees. So we're really excited uh, about Ashley joining the team. And I would like to, um, at this time, introduce Ms. Brown uh, to you, Board of Trustees, and uh, she'll say a few words to you. So here's Ms. Brown. 
Good evening. Good evening, President Montemoyor and all of our Board of Trustees. So excited to be able to um, join the Little Elm ISD family. Um, I am excited Tuesday. It feels like it's a little over a week away, but um, I can't wait for it to get here. Um, we are really, really, we, we used to live in Little Elm ISD, um, Little Elm City Limits, actually. Um, about five or six years ago. So we're very familiar with the area. It's a beautiful area and we're really excited to be joining the team. Um, I, I do have um, several years of experience in human resources and I look forward to bringing that knowledge and experience to, to the team and to um, carry us to even um, greater heights in the, in the weeks and the months. To come. Thank, thank you, Ashley. We're really excited. You'll be a great addition as executive director for human resources and so, uh, we are really looking forward to working alongside of you. And Ashley, I want to also, again, welcome you. We're very proud and happy that you're joining us and uh, to your wonderful family. Um, it, it, I'm looking forward to meeting you all in person. So looks like you have a wonderful family there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Bye-bye. Hey, Ashley, welcome Bye. aboard on behalf of, uh, of the board, and we look forward to working with you as well. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you. Do you want to try one more time? Ashley, yeah, I'm going to we'll, try to uh, connect with Ms. Thompson one, or Dr. Thompson. Ashley, you're, you're welcome to stay, but you don't need to stay unless you just want to hang out. <laughs> thank you so much. I think I'll go feed my children, but thank you so much for having me this evening. It's nice to meet you all. We're looking forward to seeing you in person. Thanks, Ashley. Alrighty. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. It rang once and it did. Um, a new number came on the call. Can we try maybe, I don't know, that 972-820? Okay, well, let's try and unmute her on here. Hi. Um, Dr. Thompson? Hi, I'm, this is Dr. Thompson. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Dr. Thompson? Hi. Can you hear us? Yeah, this is Dr. Thompson. Can you guys hear me? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Can you tell her to go ahead? Maybe yes, Ms. Thompson, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. Um, so I wanted to just um, give a quick um, update on a couple of things. One is that I know you guys probably are aware that we had a really great um, turn out this past weekend on Saturday for some senior events. Yes. Go on. There's a time delay between when I speak. Oh, she has to low, turn lower her volume so she can hear herself. Dr. Thompson, you'll want to mute the computer. But I think she's looking at the computer too, so there's a delay. There's just a time delay in when you can hear me. And when you hear me. So, um, I, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm just gonna try to share. The computer is muted. Yeah, just go ahead, Ms. Thompson. So um, basically there was um, senior events on Saturday. We had a parade in the community. It was very well attended and the state students had a really great time. There was a lot of parents who participated. Just wanted to share that update. And also I wanted to see if there's any way um, someone could um, help me understand the high school um, doesn't seem to have a PTA. And I didn't know if that was something um, that was a rule or if it just happened to be defunct. Um, and I wanted to know if there was some way someone could maybe check in, um, if we could maybe talk about how to kind of get the parents a little bit more organized for in the future. 
Okay, uh, Dr. Thompson, yeah, that, that duly noted. Um, I, I know Dr. Gallagher, Mr. Gallagher will get somebody to get in touch with you on the particulars for that. Okay. All right, so with that, thank you, thank you, Dr. Thompson, and you know, for what you did help organize the parade this last weekend and for the comments today. Uh, so with that, um, Superintendent Gallagher will move on to the, um, I guess the next item is the uh, pre-kindergarten full day location as updated by um, Dr. Glenn. No, we've got to go, we've got to go back to item A, David. For, I need to go back to page. Back to the superintendent yeah. spotlight, Dan. Yeah, item A, um, yeah. update from the board committee. So as you know, board members, um, we have a, a, a small board committee of three board members and I wanna thank those members now, uh, Mr. Blackwood, uh, Ms. Harding and then Mr. English. Um, they've served as uh, really an advisory, um, kind of a uh, advisory committee as we work through the COVID-19 crisis. A lot of the decisions that we're making as a district are very, very fluid. Um, a lot of changes happen almost daily. Uh, we were in meetings, not with the committee, but with our cabinet and different administrators today, um, literally all day on the phone um, talking about the fall and some of the steps that we're gonna to have to take in the fall, uh, you know, to keep our kids safe, to keep our uh, teachers safe, and really to, to get school going again and return to some sense of normalcy for our community. So at this time, I did ask um, those three board members that they would like to update the rest of the board just on some of the topics that we've discussed. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Blackwood uh, and then uh, Mrs. Harding, Mr. English, if you'd like to jump in. Please feel free to do so. Yeah, it's uh, President Montemayor, it's just a few items that uh, we just had about five or six little bullet points here, just kind of update everyone what we've been doing. Uh, so far, the initially, I think uh, the, the committee was going to be called the COVID-19 committee, if I remember correct, but then changed to the general board committee. Um, sounds a little better. <laughs> so, but uh, so far... <laughs> We have, we have met two times. Um, the meetings have been bi-weekly and about, uh, we try and keep them to about an hour. This last week we went over to about an hour 15. Um, and basically it's just been uh, Daniel and Ross and other people from administration. Daniel's wanted to inform us of just some basic things that were going on with trying to, the district trying to keep up with some of the rapid changes as he talked about uh, from the COVID-19 and some uh, some upcoming decisions and things that they were going to be out thinking about just kind of let us know that may or may not hit the agenda, but yet we still wanted to, but they still wanted to form the board about. Um, one of the uh, things that we learned about on the last call pretty much was, uh, or actually on the first call, we got a lot of information. They updated us on the, all the webpage or the COVID-19 webpage on the LEISD website and a lot of the resources that we had out there. Um, some of the more recent graduation announcements that have come up and updates from TMS and Denton County, uh, some things like that. Uh, this last week, we mainly uh, looked at or discussed what some of the guidelines that the district are going to be setting for reopening for when employees come back into the district. And then it's a long way off, but potentially what some of those ramifications could be when students return, hopefully in the fall when the schools. Uh, when the school cal calendar originally starts. Um, we, they also notified us of some of the things that they've been doing behind the scenes in regards to the district infrastructure with uh, devices and hardware on the, on the technology side, and then also how that uh, goes hand in hand with a lot of the updates we've been doing with curriculum and the e-learning and the distance learning. Um, and I will tell you that some of, the, uh, some of those things that the district is doing is actually going to benefit us tremendously in the long run. It's going to set us up to be, in my estimation, miles and miles ahead of many of our neighbors and many of the other districts that I've seen and some of the information that's out there. Uh, and then finally, there was a, we did have a, uh, I wouldn't say robust, but a, but a pretty decent little conversation regarding the school calendar and the information that came out last week with, uh, I believe it was Paxton with his recommendation on, change of the school calendar and things like that. And basically what it was decided at that point in time that we were gonna keep the calendar that was voted upon, uh, or that was actually, that was voted on by the community 
uh, and presented to us as the Board of Trustees by the Community Administration, and that we did go ahead and vote to pass that. We just decided it's too late in the game to try and even consider changing and revamping the entire school calendar in two months. Um, but that's really just, just kind of a highlight of the things that we've been going over. Um, and Ms. Harding or Mr. English, if either one of y'all would like to add anything to that. Yeah, I had a couple of things. Just want to just kind of reiterate one thing so the board is aware. Um, the first thing was around the communication plan. Um, we had a good chance to talk about the communication plan that would be socialized to the staff. Um, that communication man plan talks about the opening and that opening really refers to the um, opening for the contract uh, folks who are currently going to be going there for the next three weeks. So um, there is a communication plan that will go out to those individuals who are there. And so that information will be filtered out. Um, and there was just so people were there was some, you know, concerns about, you know, medical conditions, people who are have underlying conditions and it, through the communication plan that was taken into consideration. Um, so there's a lot of consideration taken into those individuals who may have, you know, some some um, underlying conditions, and there are also precautions taken there as well. Um, the only other thing I would would add to that is, um, you know, we're, they're going to be looking at to the board calendar for when we talk about coming at the, be the beginning of the next year. Um, I think there's going to be some information that may be coming from the uh, governor. If that's the case, then we'll take that in information into consideration. Um, if there's any changes there, but as Dan stated earlier, everything seems to be on track as we kind of go forward with this. One of the things I wanted to point out was the amount of work. We already know from this standpoint, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes, but when we were able to kind of dig into the details and you guys were really pointing out the different contingency plans that are being put in place, you know, you guys got a plan for umpteen scenarios that could potentially happen in the fall, you know, if we go back to normal, great, but what happens if it's a partial or if, you know, we're on lockdown like we were in March. So that was really nice being able to see that you guys already have a plan for all of that in place. Um, even some of the plans with, you know, laptops and, you know, how we're, we're taking care of all of that and taking care of our students. We've put a lot of them in our thought process and I really appreciated that. Um, the other part too was the concern that y'all were putting on with the regression of learning and things like that. And y'all have stuff in place for, you know, the, even the discussion of summer school, what you're going to do to keep students engaged and try to get them through and ready for next year. So it's a lot of detail that, um, I'm sure everybody would like to hear in, you know, an individual meeting, but probably not as much detail could be shared in a in one of our regular meetings like it is here. So it was kind of nice, but I'm free to talk. We, we talked about a lot of stuff if anybody has questions, so. <laughs> uh, and I want to- Leanna, one, one thing, okay, I'm sorry, Dan. Oh, go ahead, no, Mr. English. Leanna, yeah, one thing I did want to bring up, um, people may have questions about some of the technology decisions we're, we're making going forward. Oh, yeah. um, and we talked about the one-to-one -one, and we talked about, you know, what are some of the needs yes. for our students who may potentially may not have that technology. Um, and so there's been a decision about the one-to-one -one as far as, you know, keeping things in place so that we can potentially help those kids who may have, you know, concerns about coming back to school yes. um, as we go into the, the upcoming year, because there was a big concern around, you know, parents who just may not be comfortable with their kids actually coming back to school. And so yeah. there was a discussion there about how do we handle those situations in which we have those kids that just may not be available. And then what do we do with our technology going forward? Um, I know there was a discussion also, we talked a little bit about hotspots um, and actually Jason, we actually want to engage you on this one um, because one of the things we talked about is, is you know, potential bus hotspots or some other hotspots that if we have a situation in which the governor comes back and says, hey, things have flared up and, and we may not be able to go back to school, the question then becomes how do we handle that situation? Maybe you could you know, kind of help us try to figure out you know, what are some of our options available to us working with some of the bigger providers out there. Sure, no problem whatsoever. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, and, and, I, and I was <laughs> gonna say, really everything, y'all did a great job summarizing the, the different things we talked about. And we already have an agenda, a list of things that we're gonna talk about for the next meeting. Um, but I do wanna let the entire board know that as we decide these uh, and make a final decision on these topics, uh, for example, what the fall is gonna look like for our families and you know for our students, most importantly, we will be presenting that to the entire board and our entire community. Um, and just 
for the public that is watching, people that may want to know, our goal, our number one goal is we want our students back in the buildings this fall. We want to return to normal uh, operations. But again, we're going to take, um, you know, take the guidance from obviously the CDC, um, you know, federal government, our state government, our local, uh, our county government. Uh, we have to take that into consideration. But, you know, as things are opening up and, you know, our team had this discussion today, we're seeing more and more things open up and you're seeing, um, you know, there is a concern with a, a flare of the virus or an increase or a spike. Um, we're going to have to look at all of that throughout the summer, but um, just so our board knows and our community knows, we have two really, really important committees. I call them a, a task force. I have one led by Dr. Mika, who is working with a, a group of, of uh, principals, administrators, coordinators, various people who are looking at different options for curriculum delivery in the fall. And the three committee members just said it well. We'll be prepared if we do, and, and I hope we don't have to continue this distance learning, but if something happens where we have to, the, the distance learning that we have been provided, I would describe more as an emergency distance learning than an actual online learning. So the quality will be much different, uh, will be much better for our families. Um, and then I also have, uh, and we also wanna talk about choice because they're correct. You know, We may have some families that do not feel comfortable sending their, their kids back to school. And we want to be able to provide an opportunity for those families as well. So we're going to do our best to meet the needs of every family in Little MISD so that they stay a Lobo and we can provide them the support and the um, education that they need. So the other committee is uh, led by Mr. Roberts and Clay Walker, uh, and they're looking at devices. They're looking at, um, you know, really what uh, Mr. Olson you know, if he certainly can provide some insight, that will be helpful. But they're looking at Wi-Fi opportunities, um, the needs of our students. So we're really, I, I really feel confident that we're ahead of a lot of districts in terms of planning. And my hope is within the next several weeks, we'll have a plan that we'll be able to communicate out to our, uh, our parents and community and, of course, the board of what the fall will look like. And again, as you, you all know, things can change, uh, you know, in daily. So we're going to be prepared for whatever's thrown at us. But I do want to thank those three board members again, uh, Mr. Blackwood, Mrs. Harding, and Mr. English for um, giving us your time. And I know we try to keep it an hour to an hour, but sometimes it does go a little bit longer, but it, it's good because it provides us feedback as well. So thank you all very much. All right, at this time, I will ask um, Dr. Ashley Glover to talk about our pre-kindergarten full day location. So I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Glover. Thank you. Uh, thank you, President Montemayor, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Gallagher. Um, this evening, uh, I wanted to share some information about full day pre-K with you. Um, as you know, House Bill 3 requires districts to provide full day pre-kindergarten to eligible four-year-old students. Per our three-year waiver for implementation, one section of pre-kindergarten must become full day in the 2020-2021 school year. A location for this has been chosen and that will be Oak Point Elementary Bilingual Programming. And the reason that our committee chose this was uh, we have an existing uh, great bilingual program in pre-K, a standalone pre-K section uh, currently at Oak Point. Uh, and then we'd be able to continue to serve our bilingual students as well. Um, so that was our, our purpose for choosing that. And we wanted to make sure that you were aware uh, of that Oak Point location. Any, Any questions? For me? What questions may I answer for you? <laughs> All right. Well, if we don't have any que questions, uh, President Montemar, I'd like to move on to item E, our construction update. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, I trust you can see on your screens um, and in your board book the uh, little PowerPoint that we put together. Um, Clay, just go ahead to the next one, please. These first couple of slides um, will show you where we are in our program. Uh, the first page shows the items that have been completed or closed, uh, substantial completion on a couple items, and uh, of course the middle schools are still under construction. The high school ball fields, we're just almost done. We're working on the bleachers over there now, and uh, the concession building, which is uh, the last item on that list. It is, uh, it is improving every week when I go by there. Uh, something else is completed and put together uh, it's going to come along pretty quick. The next page shows you uh, the phase two, which is some of the things that we're also uh, working on. Um, we have the ESPC uh, with Siemens, that phase two that's working throughout the district. Um, they've made quite a lot of progress already. Um, lighting, uh, irrigation, building envelopes. Um, they've hit just about every campus uh, so far. Um, also on construction is the stadium. Uh, we kicked that off last week with the Hellas to replace the uh, track and improve the drainage there at the, at the stadium. Um, the last grouping down there is uh, the phase three, which uh, is the next bond sale. Uh, you have approved us to go ahead and engage the architects for both the indoor facility and the conversion of LMS into admin. Uh, so both of those teams are working on that. I have meetings with both of them uh, later this week. Um, and as far as construction documents, uh, it's going to take us till September, October to have the construction documents and have a GMP put together uh, for either one of those. So um, the date originally we thought was going to be made for the sale, if it doesn't happen until later, we're okay. We move along to Walker. Uh, I'm sure you get to see this one more than you than you probably do strike, um, but it is moving along considerably well. Um, I was there last week. We're starting to walk the admin folks through there so they can see their, their spaces, uh, ask their questions. Uh, we've made a few late uh, late adjustments to accommodate some things, but uh, overall it's, it's going very well. Uh, French settlement last week was probably 70% complete with the, the new concrete. Um, they've got the intersection up at, um, uh, at the east end there by the school. They have to complete that. Uh, and this next week, they're also starting uh, their work on the signal at the intersection of Hill. Uh, and that, uh, that's gonna go well, okay. Uh, Front view that you get to see as you travel uh, down in front of it. Um, this is almost 100% complete. We lack a few railings, of course, landscaping, uh, but all of our site work is in. Storm shelters done. Concession buildings in. Uh, athletic facilities are coming right along. The next one is going to show you some interior shots. This is a couple of different views toward the stage through the central atrium, which is also our cafetorium. Okay, uh, these are some pictures uh, and this collaborative area on the left is actually between the glass wall uh, classrooms and the front of the building. Uh, there'll be different vignettes of seating down through there uh, as well as uh, some mobile uh, shelving for different types of subjects that can be, that can be discussed and worked on. Uh, the picture to the right is the gym. Uh, it is, it's coming along well. So you can see some of the storefront, the larger openings in the back. Um, the uh, wood floors, I believe they're supposed to bring the product in this week, if I'm not mistaken, um, to let it start to acclimate to the space. Next, we have uh, our science labs. This uh, cabinet work is going in. These are up on the upper level. Uh, we have nine of those up there. And this is, uh, this is one of them that's going together. The fume hoods on the left and the rest of the cabinetry that goes in with the sinks and the acid tops. Another one of our flexible classroom spaces, we're, we're calling it. This uh, 
has some of the doors in place, uh, some of the wall panels, there's different setups. Some have, as you can see at the, at the back, uh, some of them have a writing surface that's actually on the glass. Um, that's between the two panes of glass, so you can have writing surface on both sides. It takes the place of a marker board. Uh, and on the right is a quarter outside of that. Yeah, we're good. Uh, moving on to strike, uh, as you can see here, uh, the envelope, external envelopes, probably 90%. Uh, the roof is dried in. It's better than 40% now. Um, this picture was taken, as you can see, back at the end of April. We've had a couple more weeks work, and I tell you, there's a lot that gets done in two weeks. Um, storm shelter, they erected that storm shelter in less than a week. Um, it is now dried in, and they'll continue to put the roofing slab and the slab inside for the floor uh, later this week. Our uh, storm shelter erection, this was some pictures that were taken back then while it was uh, taking place. Uh, the front of the school, um, all of the elevations have done, most of the finishes are, are complete. Again, that balcony outside the, uh, the library, they've been using that to move materials in and out of the, the upper level. So once that process stops and they'll be able to close that back up. And I'm gonna have to move everybody's pictures to look at that last one. Um, yeah, that's in our that's in our atrium. You can see they're starting to frame across the fur downs that go up all the way across the top of the the uh, ceiling. The wood panel ceiling will be the next uh, final step that comes in that space. Okay. Um, learning dens. Uh, this is on the second floor, which is our our main level, and you can see its finishes are are in. Uh, we have glass walls that are showing up. Um, they were getting their above ceiling inspections last week on many of these areas. Once that happens, they can drop the ceiling grid in and start to put in, uh, install the uh, light fixtures in the grids. It's another, another space. Um, I think this is, looking at, I think this is the lower level. And that one's come along a lot better than we expected as well. Um, our, our staff on site uh, had a contingency plan to be able to operate just on the main and upper level without the use of this floor, but uh, we think it's gonna be pretty close to being ready to go day one. Moving on to the high school. Uh, all we have left, as I mentioned before, are the uh, bleachers and there's a, they're covered bleachers and that assembly is going slow. It's just a lot of pieces. Um, uh, they can't work obviously when it's raining or have any lightning in the area because they're dealing with metal pieces. Um, so when it does get rainy, they kind of get scarce, but uh, the work is ongoing in the, um, in the concession building. There's a little closer shot on the concession building and the team steps, the bleachers, um, this whole area around the backside of the softball uh, area is gonna create seating for teams uh, where they can collectively sit and, and wait for the next game or in between games or for parents and spectators whose game is not going on yet, they've got some place to, to hang out until it's time. Back over the stadium, again, that's the field that was just replaced. Uh, we're working on the track and uh, um, that's expected to be finished before the end of the summer as well. Phase two with Siemens, you know, is underway uh, successfully throughout the district so far. Uh, they are in the process of changing uh, RTUs at several of the campuses. Um, so by the end of the summer, we'll have brand new equipment and uh, change out of lighting and a lot of other uh, energy saving issues will be taken care of by the end of the summer. We talked about the next bond sale. Um, safety and security upgrades, we're still looking at trying to scope those out, uh, including fencing, lighting, cameras, um, other exterior improvements as we are able to sit down with the uh, with the principals. We were hoping to get to do that before the end of school this year, but things kind of got messed up, uh, but we will get back into that. 
Any questions? Anything I can answer? Hey, Rick, what about the, uh, the fields at both of the middle schools, as far as football field track, is that kind of all on schedule too? Will it be ready for sports for fall? Walker, Walker is certainly on track. Um, the uh, Hellas did not accept a portion of the field at uh, strike. Uh, it was too, you know, lack of a better word, mushy. Uh, they've gotten so much rain there. Um, and the soil is such that it, it doesn't drain uh, naturally. Um, so they're having to go back in and redo some of the portion, but I think it was the eastern half of the field uh, before they'll, they'll come in and, and get it up to where it needs to be. So there's a, there's a chance that that may be behind. Okay, thank you. And we've, we've kept Sandra up to speed to make sure that she knows what's going on, what will be available by the time school starts. Okay. Hey, this is Delian, I had a couple questions too. Um, so how are we feeling with the strike schedule period? I mean, are we feeling like that's gonna be in a pretty good state or 70%, 80% or where do we know we stand with that? Um, they are making improvements every week. They're picking up day or two days almost every week on the schedule. Um, they do have us in the building uh, before the start of school. Um, we may start in some areas uh, with, they've, they've polished some of, the, some of the concrete floors on a couple of the levels. We may start school with polished concrete floors and then come back and put the vinyl flooring in after school starts. Um, it certainly doesn't keep us from doing it. <laughs> but all of the major systems, the lighting, the HVAC, that's all expected to be operational. Okay. And uh, Daniel, when do we expect the, the teachers to be able to move into the classrooms in both those schools? Is it kind of an August, beginning of August, end of July timeframe or what's some of the thought there? Actually, Mr. Martin, I'm gonna let him answer because he's, he's okay. working with a company on, um, we have a company we're working with on moving the teachers. So Mr. Martin, do you wanna kind of mention okay. that? Discuss yes, that? sir. Uh, matter of fact, that company dropped uh, the moving apparatus off this week to Presswick, um, LMS and, uh, and Powell. Right now at Walker, we'll have a TCO uh, July the 8th, and we'll be able to start loading FF&E &E at that time, as well as moving the teachers then in, moving their stuff from where it is now into their new classrooms will take place the week of the 13th. That's okay, that's July, July 13th to August 13th? Uh, July. July 13th, okay, great. Yeah, first day of, first day of school is August 12th. Yeah, Right. I, was say, Rick, I hope not the week in August 13th. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, um, strike is a little bit later. Uh, we're looking at strike uh, moving teachers in the week of the, the 27th uh, because it, we'll be late getting our TCO because of the storm shelter there and dealing with dealing with the fire marshal at the colony. Um, he's a little more specific about things and, and rightly so. Um, but uh, it'll be a week, two weeks later at strike. Okay. All right, and, and the last thing I, I wanted to ask is, um, you know, we talked early in the summer about the time capsules. Yes. So uh, when- Tony, I, I visited with Tony about that today. Um, he will have those available for us to install uh, 1st of June. Okay. Outstanding. If you, want to, if you want to put something in them, better get over there. All right. And you do, what is the size of those things, by the way? I mean, are, are they, have we decided on size? Inches. They're 12 by 12 by 12. They're one foot. It's a one foot okay. cubic box. And it's a stainless, uh, steel, it's a stainless yep. steel cube. Yep. And there are some really, really cool things in there. And sadly, you're going to have to show up in 2050 to find out what they are because the, the, I'll tell you the schools and the kids have done some unbelievable things. It's just uh, it's like, I got one today that I almost cried about. It was just amazing what they did. Tony, uh, I think we're all calculating how old we're gonna be in 2050. I could see everyone's face right now. Wait a minute, how old am I gonna be in 2050? <laughs> you know, we'll have to all come back for that. Yeah. Because <laughs> Wow, you know, that's going to be, this is really find kind of fascinating. Um, I, I think as a board, I mean, we have to probably decide on what we want to put in there as well. I think it'd be some 
cool mementos and maybe some family photos and stuff, just kind of where we are and what took place would be pretty neat. Yeah, I would say, yeah, that would be great. And um, you're more than welcome. Be sure that you, whatever you bring me, that you bring me two sets. And that, cause we can have one for each box. Okay. And then um, in, uh, Ju uh, June 1, yeah, we're gonna seal those boxes up. Okay, so we gotta move fast. fast. Yeah, we, didn't we already, did? if we didn't, we need to put a board uh, photograph in. Yeah. Yeah, so June I, one is it? We got. I don't we, know have a, we have a list of things we're gonna put in there, but I don't know if we have a full board photograph. The groundbreaking photos for both schools have the have the full. Yeah, mm -hmm. and schools. Cecilia yeah. has some. We've got some from the the parade um, where we're on the the hay bale. So we definitely need a a board photograph, you know, with our names on there, so people know who we are. You know, I, I'd probably also recommend, and something pretty, pretty nice is, I know, Daniel, we have the the kind of the seals for Little Elm. It'd kind of be nice if we take, and uh, I don't know where we get those seals done at. Um, I, we probably have a person that does them for the, the coins and the seals. I would love to, to put like a silver coin with all our names or something in there, or something of like a maybe a little silver bar with information, kind of a unique little thing. Um, silver is usually pretty inexpensive, so that's pretty good. <laughs> we can get an ounce of silver for, you know, 20 bucks. So, but it kind of will be kind of unique and, and different. Um, so I know, I think the board, you guys, we should just think about what we want to put in there and, and go for it. Hey, Rick, I did have a question. Uh, back to the indoor facility, indoor athletic facility. Uh, yeah. You said that that's out with uh, some of the, uh, the people doing the proposal at this point in time. Uh, who are the companies that we're going to be accepting bids from on that? Well, as you know, we're, we do a, a GMP uh, mm -hmm. a risk. So of the three that we have to work with in the bond program, um, we were hoping to be able to use Jackson. That um, that might be a little bit too detailed yeah. discussion kind of as a whole separate topic for, for the bond and the indoor facility, et cetera. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that, yeah. I think that's going to be a little bit more confidential. We can talk in the private. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But it's, yeah, we certainly need to discuss it. We'll add it, either discuss it in closed door or add it to next month's meeting. Yeah. By the way, it, uh, Rick, to go along with that, um, for the multi purpose um, facilities that we have out there, are we going to give that a kind of a nickname or something like that? Are we going to put it out for the kids to name it or something like that? That'd be kind of nice. Well, that, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> well, well that's, that's, that's our decision daily on yeah that's that's right it's a board decision but we always I, you know we always want to get community input yeah. um, so we'll go through that process and then we'll bring that to the board and let the board decide but yeah that is one thing we have in our board policy is that the naming of facilities yep. um, it's solely the board's decision it is can i answer anything else Um, thank you, Mr. Martin. Well, thank Bye, you. Appreciate it. Have a ball. Yeah, and I want to say thank you, Mr. Martin. I've been out um, at both facilities. I've done a couple walkthroughs, um, and it they are coming along really well. Especially Walker Strike is a little behind, but I've seen a, I've seen some um, massive improvement there. And then the high school facilities. I I tell you right now, our community is going to love it. The baseball and softball fields are impressive. Um, it's it's going to be a top-notch facility, and I'm really proud of the, the support that the board um, and really division the board had in calling that bond election. Um, Little MISD is changing uh, right before our, our eyes, and it's really a result of this board and our community for their um, you know support. So appreciate everyone's support on that. And that is it for reports of the superintendent, I believe. Yes. Perfect. All right, so with that, we'll move on to our action items or things that need an action. So, hmm? yeah. Yeah, so the first one is the consideration of the approval of our May 4th uh, 2020 special board minutes, uh, special me meeting minutes. Uh, is there 
you know, everyone's had a chance to review those. Is there a motion to approve those minutes as presented? So moved. Moved. Dan. Moved by Dan. Is there a second? Second. By Leanna. All right. Is there any questions on those minutes? No. All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes? All right. I see. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Myers, are you going to abstain? I'll abstain. I wasn't there. Yep. All right. And then everyone else is a yes. Um, the consideration of approval of our April 20th, 2020 regular board meeting minutes. Is there anyone uh, that wants to submit those for approval? So moved. Submitted by Leanna, moved by Leanna. Second. Seconded by Mr. English. Is there any questions or comments on those sets of minutes? Sonia, I just made one note to you about a small typo, nothing big. All right, so is there a motion to approve the minutes with the um, clerical um, correction that Mr. Olson emailed in? All those in favor? All right, I do see everyone approving those. Thank you very much. Those pass. All right, now the additional action items, consideration of approval of the resolution to postpone our June 20th, 2020 recapture election uh, to November 3rd. Uh, Mr. Anderson. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Superintendent Gallagher. We have been um, trying to get this recapture election um, called, and you did for June 2020. And um, because of the COVID-19 closures, the Denton County is unable to administer the election. So the administration is recommending that we um, postpone until November 3rd. And that's the earliest date that Denton County said that they could administer um, this election. So the administration recommends approval of the resolution to postpone the recapture election from June 20th, 2020 to November 3rd, 2020. David, mute. Is, is there a motion for the approval of that resolution? So moved. Moved by Mr. Olson. Is there second. A second. Second. By Mr. Flores. Is there any additional questions on that? Uh, I do, have, Grant. So, will this fall into the early voting time period? So, I mean, is there going to be any confusion of uh, you know, this with the national elections, and so on? There is, yes, and it is with, with the the um, it will be with the early voting and the uh, voter registration deadline is um, October fifth. And then the deadline to submit is October 23rd. And then the dates for early voting is October 19th through October 30th. Okay. So I think we'll just and have to again, be And this was, we were working with the Secretary of State and Denton County and Denton County, we had to get confirmation that they could at least administer this election. And um, this is the earliest that they'd commit to. Um, try to get it done earlier. Cause we know that, um, you know, the. The result of this election will um, determine um, whether we have to have another election or not, because it's something that um, that the state has put in place for us to submit funds to 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 TEA for the um, for the recapture of funds um, through our state funding. And I know I've went into detail with that in prior um, board meetings. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments? No. Okay. All the, well, right. And it, it, because it's going to, like I mentioned, the national, the national election, but it's also um, what our new um, school board elections are going to be as well. So I think as a district, we're going to have to kind of clarify what all's out there, what we need people to get out there for. I know, you know, obviously we can't, you know, it, advocate one way or another, but we can certainly put information as to what we're asking people to do. Yeah, President Montemayor, we will have a, uh, just like we did for the bond election, um, which I think we did a really nice job as a district in communicating that and putting out the information that our community needed to know so they could vote mm -hmm. and choose the way they wanted to choose. And we'll do the same thing for this, or we'll work with Cecilia and um, Dr. Tipton and um, you know our team to make sure we communicate 
uh, the facts so that people are aware of what they're voting on because as we all know, sometimes the way a ballot measure is written, it can be very confusing. Uh, so we will, um, I assure you, we're gonna, we will communicate a lot on this just to make sure people are well aware of what they need or how they should vote, actually how they want to vote. I'll say that. Right. Okay. All right, so all those in favor of approving this new date? I do see everyone is a yes. Our motion passes. Uh, we have consideration of approval and increase um, to Little Elm ISD employee health care contributions. Also, Mr. Anderson. Yes, well, I appreciate um, the board again uh, giving us an opportunity to bring this to to you. Um, I think this is about the fourth year in a row. And um, Leslie Malmer, our health insurance specialist, um, she's here and she's going to present it. But if you want to see, this came from UEA, and this is for our 2019-20 school year where Little Elm ISD is ranked num number one along with a couple other districts in the highest contribution and um, to our employees for health insurance. And um, and our employees do appreciate um, the board's uh, participation in this. So Leslie, um, she's gonna go through um, a little bit more detail and she has all the answers to questions and um, I think Clay's gonna help her, guide her through with um, the Excel sheets. Uh, good evening. Uh, um, um, my name is Leslie. I'm the benefits coordinator for the district and um, just wanted to present um, the changes that TRS is making for the new school year for the 2020-21 uh, school year. Um, one of the major changes they're, um, they're doing is they're changing carriers. They're moving from Aetna to Blue Cross Blue Shield. So um, that they um, told us that they, this is a very broad network, so we shouldn't be concerned too much about whether doctors are gonna be in network. So we're, we're, I'm actually kind of excited about moving to Blue Cross. We were with them years ago. So I think it's gonna be a good move. Um, first uh, plan there, our Active Care 1HD. Um, that is our plan that a majority of our employees are enrolled in. This is the plan that uh, we currently pay the full employee only premium on the $378. Um, and you can see um, there in the blue is the premiums um, that they're going to move to for the new plan year. So they're gonna increase about $19 um, per month on that premium. Um, one thing TRS wanted to do um, was to make um, family coverage a little more affordable. So you can see that on that plan, the employee and child, employee and family, they've decreased the premium a little bit there. So uh, you can see that they are trying to make it a little more affordable for our employees. Um, then the second plan there, Active Care Primary, is a brand new plan for the, for the 2020-21 plan year. Um, this one came about because uh, we asked them to come up with a plan that offered uh, a lower premium, but to have some coverage on uh, doctor visits, co-pays on doctor visits. So this plan is going to allow our um, employees to have coverage before they meet a deductible. They're going to be able to uh, pay um, pay co-pays when they go to the doctor on that particular plan. Um, and then the third plan there is active care primary. It is going to replace the active care select plan that we uh, currently have. Um, the reason they're changing this plan is because um, this one will give us a statewide network rather than just a county network. Right now on active care select, they can only go to doctors in their county. Um, moving to this primary plan, they're going to have a statewide network. So it's going to be a bigger network for them. 
Um, and then on active care two, that's uh, one that's been around for a lot of years. It is the, uh, the premium plan, the one that covers the best. And obviously, as you can see, is the most expensive. Um, this one, again, this year, they're not gonna allow any new enrollees in this particular plan. So um, this one, if you're already on it, you can continue to be on that plan. And then the last one is the Scott and White HMO. Um, it's one they've uh, offered um, for several years now, and that one is um, going to be continuing to be offered in, uh, in district or for our district. If you'll move to the next tab, tab, it shows a little more information about each plan um, and kind of comparison, so our employees can see, um, you know, the, their deductible comparison, uh, copay comparisons, that sort of thing. Um, and it just shows them all side by side there. Um, they, is there any questions on the plans that we're offering? Probably first we need to put motions and then we can ask questions. Okay. Um, so is there a motion to, so I guess, Han, have we actually discussed what, um, yeah, we need to discuss the cost of the, the plan. I don't know if uh, Grant wanted to discuss that. or. Well, I can just, the um, additional cost and contributing the, um, would be about $285,000 total. And we're moving to $397 a month from $378 a month for those play employees that participate. And, um, so the administration recommends approval of increase to Little Elm ISD employee health care contribution is um, presented. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move. Approve by or move by Ms. Harding. Is there a second? Second. By Ms. Myers. All right. I um, I do have a question. So we are recommending that we can. Uh, uh, that we increased our contribution to 397, but we, now we do have this new plan at 386. Mm -hmm. So is it gonna be that we're saying we will provide up to 397? That's or? correct, yes. Okay, we're so not, if someone's yeah. at the 396, we're not gonna just give them the difference in cash or anything? No, no. Okay. We, we, and if we someone is on another plan that is more expensive, we still will contribute 397 towards that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we- yes. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. And we, um, and this way, HR can tell the employees when they come in that um, the district does pay for employees, hundred percent of the employees' health insurance. Okay. All right, is there any other questions? Do we um, do we still give that a hundred dollars in their pay? The hundred. Um, we we had done something in the past, and I don't know if we incorporated that into the the premium contribution or if there if that was for something else. Um, no, I don't believe we contributed any. Leslie, do you know of any other benefits that LEISD contributes to? I do not. No, believe no. The only thing uh, LEISD contributes to is the medical premiums. Okay, I just I remember we were adding a hundred dollars. We and. I think right before I came, or I think it used to be that you contributed a portion and maybe it was a hundred dollars or a, mm -hmm. another number. And yeah. then um, the board chose to move it up to a hundred percent for the employees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a few years back. Few yeah, years it was back. a few years back. <laughs> yeah. A few years back, we were contributing 225, the minimum. The state requires us to contribute. Okay. Uh, and then that year, they the premium for that active care one HD was three twenty five. So then we increased it a hundred dollars to get it up to that full premium that year. And what we're doing now is going to increase it nineteen dollars a month, so we can stay covering that. 100%. Yeah, it was kind of our workaround to help cover that cost. I remember that now. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so all those in favor of approving the increase to 397? I see Ms. Harding, Ms. Myers, Mr. Blackwood, Mr. Olson, Mr. English, 
and Mr. Flores. All right, so motion passes with everybody voting yes. All right, thank you very much. Can I just say real quick, I wanna thank the board for that. And um, Leslie, um, you did a wonderful job presenting. Thank you for presenting thank that. You. Really, really no, I do appreciate job. the board approving that too. <laughs> well, and, and I was gonna say, you know, as you all know, we had a, a lengthy discussion about this last year. Insurance seems to keep going up year after year after year. And, um, you know, it, it's something that does mean a lot to our employees, especially the ones who take the insurance. So thank you all so much, um, you know, for covering that. And Grant is right, it does cover the cost um, at the uh, Active Care One HD. So, you know, for those that take that, we do cover 100% of uh, their health insurance. And there's not a lot of districts out there that can say that. So that is something that I appreciate the board's support on. Excellent. Um, so we'll move on to the consideration of approval of HB 3834, Cybersecurity Training Certification. Mr. Walker. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, President Montemayor and uh, board members. Uh, good evening. So I brought to you back in February the House Bill 3834, Cybersecurity Training Requirements. Um, as a district, we have completed this. Uh, we do have a couple that still lack and there's some extenuating circumstances on those. So we're comfortable of moving forward with certification, which is required prior to the next board meeting, uh, the date that is required by law. So <clears throat> just as a review, it's, it's requiring local government employees and elected officials to complete our annual cybersecurity awareness training. Um, it's required, the training program was required to be certified by the uh, Director of Information Resources uh, by the state. Uh, in LASD, we implemented the program called Inspired E-Learning. So the administration uh, recommends the approval of HB 3834 certification for local government's form. Excellent. Is there a motion to approve this certification? So moved. All right, Ms. Myers, is there a second? Second. Is there by uh, Mr. English? Is there any questions or comments on this? No, I, yeah, my question is, when do we project, um, basically we'll be at 100%. I know we had a couple of extenuating circumstances. It, so I believe the in, in human resources have been very, uh, Ms. Pentecost has been fantastic working with me getting compliance. There's been the couple, I believe, are out of the country and actually have no internet available. So um, we have we have a couple of more weeks to hit that to hit that target. So I'm not sure okay. if we're going to actually make it or not, but, but we're, we're, I think we're only about three or four off. Okay, so we're pretty close. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, so all those in favor of approving this uh, certification as discussed by Mr. Walker? All right, I do see everyone voting yes. Motion passes with unanimous vote. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, does anyone have any items from the consent agenda that they needed to pull or address specifically? Okay. So with that, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. By Ms. Harding, is there a second? Second. By Mr. Olson, are all, uh, any questions or? Well, uh, so all those in favor of approving the consent agenda as submitted to us? All right, also everybody voted yes. Motion passes. All right, thank you very much. Um, as far as I do you know, really I just, have you know the same comments as usual? You know, just thanking everybody for all their hard work. Um, you know, this times you know these things change. Everything's so fluid and changes so often. And um, I know the the quick response team that was formed and the administration that's working on this is you know stays tied in constantly to everything. So I do appreciate that. Uh, in terms of any other business, um, I do know in in June, we historically have our officer elections as well. So, you know, I would like if there's anyone that has any real reason to postpone those elections or do anything different this year to maybe, you know, send, um, you know, Superintendent Gallagher an email uh, or Sonia an email that we can then distribute on whether we need to postpone or do anything different with those. Um, I think we can continue as is. I mean, I know we are postponing our, um, our trustee seat elections, um, but two of the three, um, it's my understanding that we don't have to reopen that 
for application. So it's still going to just be two out of three that are running in a pose. So I think the risk of, of um, not, I think the loss of time of not voting for officers in June would be outweighed by the risk of anyone that could potentially be an officer not being reelected. So anyway, that's something to think about. You know, if everyone can, if you have any concern to not have those in June, I think as of now, they're scheduled to proceed. I think they should proceed, but if anyone has any comments or concerns, let's take that up, um, you know, like I said, through Sonia, and so we communicate that to everybody. Um, other than that, you know, I don't really have any other comments from there. I'll open it up to the rest of the board members. I do see shaking heads. All right. Um, Superintendent Gallagher. Yeah, board members, again, just thank you for your support for our uh, staff members, teachers, and all staff members on the insurance. It's a huge deal that they certainly appreciate. Um, just a quick reminder, we do have, and we're so excited about it, graduation this Thursday at Texas Motor Speedway. Um, for those, and again, I'm not sure how many community members are watching this live, but I know it's going to be recorded or it is going to be on YouTube. Um, we do have it streaming. So the graduation ceremony will be streaming on the Texas Motor Speedway website. Um, we've put it on social media, the link as well. Um, we are providing um, masks for students um, that, you know, if a student chooses to wear a mask, they certainly can. Um, it probably, I anticipate, will be a nice keepsake for students down the road. Um, this is an outdoor ceremony, so uh, we will have water for students. And of course, board members, we're going to have water for you as well. Um, okay. we, because today I watched it today and it was very hot. Um, of course, the first ceremony was at 5 p.m. and it was Argyle ISD and they did a wonderful job. Um, our ceremony, luckily, is at 10 a.m. So I think our ours won't be quite as warm, but it's going to be it's going to be a wonderful event. And um, you know, this has been quite a year. This is technically our last board meeting, um, you know, officially during the school year. And, and I'm happy to say this is our last one that we're doing virtually. So our next board meeting, I can't wait to see everybody face to face. We'll be back in the boardroom at Zellers and I look forward to seeing you all on Thursday. So thanks so much for all of your support and everything you guys do for our district. Okay, thank you very much. And with that, uh, is there a motion to uh, adjourn? So moved. Move. All right, is there a second? Second. Who's that, Mr. Eagles? Hell yeah. Are we all in favor? All right. All yay. But that will adjourn at 7.23 p.m. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, guys.